Greetings from the frontline cities of Parisia. My name is uh, Mekita Komar, and today we are happy to talk with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Estonia, Urna Sreslal. Nice to meet you. Um, hello, and uh, my best regards to all brave people of Ukraine. Thank you, thank you. Uh, okay. Um, Estonia is already taking an active part in restoring of the infrastructure of Ukraine, particularly in Zhitomi region. Uh, is there any plan to expand this program and cover more Ukrainian region, regions? In this uh, recovery project, uh, uh, we are targeting uh, particularly uh, uh, Zhitomir Oblast, and this has been also a pledge uh, towards European Union countries by, uh, by President of Ukraine that uh, all the European countries uh, to take a particular region uh, and we have uh, had a great uh, uh, cooperation. Uh, we are arranging uh, in coming weeks also a uh, second uh, recovery conference uh, of Zhutomir in Tallinn. And our main idea is to make like a rural project it, uh, and to encourage also other Western countries to take a supportive uh, role in that. Uh, and I know some countries have already picked up uh, particular regions and uh, this is uh, very important uh, because we handle it uh, in a comprehensive manner that, that not only a state aid we are capable to deliver uh, by infrastructure reconstruction and so on but also to encourage cooperation of local governments of ngos uh, of business community to make a support to, to widen the scope of help okay okay thank you uh, Mr. Minister, earlier you called uh, to increase the volume of support provided to Ukraine uh, to 1% uh, of the EU GDP. How realistic and acceptable uh, is this amount for the European Union? And uh, are there many opponents within uh, the EU to approach this helping to Ukraine? Well, my pledge uh, in last uh, European Union Foreign Minister's Council was in the context that uh, uh, a mm, total GDP of uh, European Union is around uh, uh, 100, 100 uh, comparing to one of Ukrainian GDP uh, before the uh, uh, this stage of war last year. And so it means that the majority of, uh, of burden of uh, fighting against aggressor is uh, uh, shared by Ukrainian people and we need to do more. Estonia has supported over 1% of our GDP and particularly if we could manage to do it uh, uh, as military aid to rise the volume of military aid to 1% of GDP of EU combined uh, it would make a difference in the course of that war. Uh, now uh, I think this is a message I'm going to repeat and uh, I think uh, that uh, our assessment should be that we, the Western countries, should immediately change the paradigm of investing to the Ukrainian victory. That uh, uh, the current altitude is not enough. We have to rise the heat uh, 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 towards uh, Russia, rise the temperature of our support uh, uh, to Ukraine by uh, uh, widening immediately the scope of sanctions and secondly, delivering all the range of uh, heavy weapon, conventional weaponry, what uh, Ukraine has asked. Uh, the, this is the key message. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, and now I want to uh, talk about uh, the last uh, horrible news from Poland, uh, that uh, missiles that fell in Poland caused serious concern in NATO and uh, all countries bordering Russia. Uh, can the situation in Poland affect uh, the fact that Estonia will reduce the volume of supplies to Ukraine in order to strengthen its own security? No, and I think uh, it is not the case uh, what any of uh, well NATO member states has, uh, has uh, pointed out. I think uh, in these dramatic uh, scenes we see the any, uh, intent of annihilation of civic infrastructure of Ukraine. In that context, we need immediately uh, to uh, raise the volume, particularly of air defense system, and also uh, to uh, 
to put uh, away any caveats of delivering also the long-range missiles, so you could hit uh, the aggressor in a wider uh, territory. Okay. Uh, and Estonia is one of the most uh, active member of NATO, uh, from mem member of NATO countries, uh, which call uh, on the alien aliens to uh, integrate Ukraine more actively. On your opinion, after the beginning of the full-scale invasion of the Russian Federation, the attitude of other uh, NATO members uh, states towards the accession of Ukraine changed for the better, or why uh, that we want. Uh, are its um, uh, this um, Ukraine exception in NATO are more uh, uh, we now uh, have it more uh, possible or not or maybe uh, maybe uh, uh, maybe uh, it's more far from us now. Uh. Baltic foreign ministers, uh, right after um, uh, when the moment when uh, Ukrainian president uh, uh, published uh, a pledge uh, of Ukraine to become a full member of uh, NATO, uh, made uh, a clear statement where we uh, um, referred to the 2008 Bucharest uh, um, conclusions of NATO summit where it was clearly stated uh, that we see uh, a future of Ukraine in a NATO family. And uh, it means that uh, Estonia will be steadfast uh, in our policy uh, to uh, look uh, the ways uh, of uh, in a current situation of integration. We have passed also our particular uh, government policy uh, on that matter, how to uh, help the integration of NATO and uh, Ukraine in many practical cooperation domains. And I think also that uh, uh, this is going to be uh, the um, how uh, the NATO uh, alliance will handle the Ukrainian uh, appeal. This will be one of the key uh, issues of discussion in uh, NATO uh, foreign ministers meeting in Bucharest, uh, uh, where uh, also uh, will uh, take part uh, Ukrainian foreign minister Kuleba. And uh, Estonia uh, is has having a clear understanding that, uh, of course, nobody thinks that literally it will happen tomorrow, but uh, we need to uh, have an open dialogue how to uh, handle the Ukrainian appeal in a path uh, further and forward. Okay, uh, I understand. Uh, okay, what about um, Ukrainian uh, membership in uh, European Union? Uh, Ukraine now received the status of the candidate uh, for EU membership. Um, how relevant are the accession negotiation now? Um, and uh, is it realistic, uh, in your opinion, for Ukraine to join the European Union by the end of the decade? Uh, one thing is that uh, now we need to uh, uh, develop the process. And very important is uh, for me that already uh, in the next year, uh, the negotiation uh, will start in practice uh, by chapters. And uh, I think that uh, this year, in all the dramaticism, what has happened has basically as script states that impossible could become possible and vice versa. And it would be possible if first there is a political determination, what I fully see on Ukrainian side and uh, Estonia sees our role to encourage all the uh, Europeans, European countries in that matter. And secondly, it should be based on objectivity, uh, objective assessment. But at the final end, this is going to be a political decision. And in that political decision, I think uh, uh, the, uh, there is no alternative uh, or to the, in the future, to Ukrainian as NATO and EU membership. It, 
surely these processes need a consensus in both organization uh, members uh, circle but uh, what is important that uh, we are intensively using the time and uh, i have made a pledge also that uh, as in the widening of uh, european union into balkans there has been also a, such a diplomatic initiative as a berlin uh, process that uh, we should create also of the like-minded countries a similar uh, support group of eu countries to uh, support uh, the uh, path of ukraine into eu okay okay um now about uh, russians um when you were asked uh, whether you would like to see putin in prison uh, you answered that um, you would rather see him in hell this became one of the most uh, vivid uh, quotes of this war uh, how realistic do you think uh, is it to condemn putin and his cronies as the war criminals i think uh from the moral perspective of world, I see no alternative to that. And uh, this is something uh, we in Estonia, we in like-minded countries are ready to work by day and by night, because it is the only guarantee that these atrocities will uh, not appear in a new form uh, in the future. And uh, this uh, should be also a clear condition uh, that uh, the justice will prevail. And of course, the one thing is a practicality is how to take uh, accused persons physically uh, appear uh, in the trials, etc. Uh, but I think it is going to be also the lachmus to all the world countries, whether we can imagine that of the Ukrainian uh, victory, uh, we could return to international relations systems uh, system uh, like in a normality with Putin regime or not. My answer is uh, full, uh, fully negative. We can't return and uh, we have to, in that context, create already a legal responsibility uh, system uh, under which handling these uh, people Putin, his accomplices, either uniformed or not, belong. Because it will be uh, fully uh, out of perspective uh, that we are handling uh, these war crimes which take place, uh, well, in the battlefield or in the occupied territories uh, of Ukraine. But we, uh, well, do not work out a mechanism of legal responsibility for these uh, persons who started all this war, this genocidal war. And uh, this is very important also that our determination uh, to support Ukrainian victory should be based in a full, uh, uh, undeniable truth. And I'm proud that Estonia has been the first country, foreign country, which recognized this war, aggression war of Russia against Ukraine as a genocidal war. And my pledge is uh, to the world countries to join with that statement. Several countries have already done it. And secondly, to join uh, also uh, in appeal uh, to demand a special tribunal on uh, aggression uh, crime of Russian Federation against Ukraine. Okay. Uh, and what would Ukraine victory in this war? Uh, what is with will be for you personally and for Estonia? I think to all uh, people in Estonia, to me personally, it is something uh, of uh, immense uh, importance. And it does mean also that it is a precondition that these atrocities, this aggression war will not take place against my uh, homeland, against my people, that we are fully aware that uh, if there are going to be any ambivalency in the outcome of this war, so no people in Europe can sleep uh, in peace, uh, it means that uh, 
the victory of Ukraine needs to be unconditional, all the territory of uh, Ukraine needs to be freed, uh, aggressor should uh, pay uh, repar full reparations uh, for the damages uh, it has uh, caused, and thirdly, the justice should pre uh, prevail and all these people responsible for crimes, particularly the top leadership of uh, Russia should be taken into uh, responsibility. Okay, thank you. Uh, and uh, one extra question. Um, the media uh, is discussing a new candidate uh, for the post of the NATO Secretary General, and Estonian Prime Minister Kaja Kalas is among the likely candidates. Uh, could you tell me, uh, it should be uh, more like a rumor, uh, or whether Estonia uh, will be run will run for the NATO leadership in the near future. If there is a, a smoke, there is always also a fire. <laughs> in Estonia, we say, but uh, a truth is that uh, yes, our prime minister has been uh, well uh, named as a, a possible candidate, uh, but. Uh, in picking uh, the uh, next uh, NATO Secretary General, this is not a place where people uh, run by applications, as a, uh, but uh, it is indeed a case where the Allies will make a political decision. Uh, the Prime Ministers, Presidents will then have a discussion along. Uh, Estonian understanding is that uh, uh, the next secretary general should be a, a top level uh, political leader it gives also a certain particular leverage to lead uh, uh, this uh, apparatus of organization and authority what nato needs and secondly also of course we we believe that it is very important uh, that uh, secretary general has a strong determined assessment on the security needs of europe and how to support, uh, by any means, uh, the victory of Ukraine. Thank you, thank you. Uh, that's all. Uh, today we talked uh, to the head of the Ministry of the Foreign Affairs of Estonia, Urmas Reinsnal. Uh, thank you for the interesting conversation, Mr. Minister, and uh, thank you Estonian people uh, for supporting Ukraine in this war. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.